All right, let's swing back to Dodgers, though. So, yeah, they do sign Ryan Brazier, who was awesome for them last year. So he was cut by the Red Sox, goes to the Dodgers, and they are like, dude, new cutter, what do you think? It worked. 0-7-0 ERA, and like Robert mentioned, he wanted to go back. He's back for two years with the incentives here that can take it up to $13 million. That's what you know enabled them to make that. Caleb Ferguson deal, obviously a, a bit of a roster crunch when the Dodgers have just super dudes everywhere. So they also had Dodger Fest this past weekend. Would you like to get to some of the comments that were recited at Dodger Fest? Sure. <laughs> Did, but before we get to it, though, I know you're going to show the Mookie comment, but the mm-hmm. the picture with Shohei's arm, everyone was like freaking out about the scar. Has no one ever seen a Tommy John scar before? Yeah, that's what not, it looks like. That's exactly what it looks like. million people. There was nothing – like, he's just – he. that's who he is. Like, if like if LeBron James gets a normal baseball surgery, people are going to freak out about it. Before we head to the comments by Mookie, Brazier, you have to remember, too, back in 21, he got hit in the head coming back from a rehab assignment. That stuff doesn't – like, you don't just like, oh, well, I'll just come back and everything is going to be fine. He got hit on a, by a line drive in the side of the head – and he dealt with some issues trying to come back from that. And, you know, to be able to find a place where he's comfortable, obviously everyone's going to say, well, everybody wants to play for the Dodgers. But he's comfortable in L.A. He had success, success that he had when they won the World Series. Just another great piece. Yeah, you're right. Um, there were a ton of interesting comments. We'll start with the one that got the most headlines. So Mookie Betts addressing the crowd and addressing what the Dodgers are going to bring to the table for every opponent this season. I mean, every, every game is going to be the other team's world series. I mean, it is what it is. It's what we signed up for, you know, I mean, every, every game is going to be the other team's world series. I mean, it is what it is. It's what we signed up for, you know? And so he only said it once, by the way, we're just playing it on repeat because I think some clubhouses might do that. You know how, There'll be the video room in some of the clubhouses or next to the clubhouse, and they'll be playing stuff on a loop. Have you ever seen that where they'll play like the starting pitchers pitches mm-hmm. on a loop? You ever seen those videos that mm-hmm. you yep. pass by and you're not really <laughs> supposed to look, but you just give it a little peek and say, ah, I know your game plan. No. Um, but anyway, don't you think they're going to play that on a loop? And obviously there it is. Why? The quote. Why are you going to play that on a loop? Some people, some people, obviously the, the Dodger haters out there are like, oh, you can't say that. Some people I saw in, X Twitter, people were like, "Well, I guess Mookie's not getting a hit all year." Did you see like because they were making fun of him for last postseason where he went like him and Freddie went like one for twenty two or whatever. I'll take him on my team then. I know. I listen. I will too. But it was just funny how people yeah. were like, "Well, I guess he ain't getting a hit all year then." If it's the World Series. I mean, just people are crazy. Would this piss you off? All right, we got. Let's go down He's the right. player the He's player right. lineup. Listen, when I listen when I played against the Yankees for all those years, guess what? Every time you played them, it was a big. When you're facing, you know, Jeter. Clemens, Pettit, Mariano, Bernie, Posada. You're like, I better bring it or they're going to whoop our asses. So, yeah, this is exactly what he's saying. The Braves have the same way. People are going to get up for the Braves, the Phillies. I mean, it, it doesn't change. He's not doesn't wrong. Change. I don't no. think he's wrong at all. I think he's 100% right. It's not like it's not like he attacked a certain fan base. No. I remember no. Back, in, back in like 07, Jimmy Rollins was like, well – the NL East goes through Philly now, not through New York. Like he attacked, and he got booed in New York for the rest of his career. But Mookie wasn't—he wasn't attacking any fan base. He wasn't being snarky about it. He's exactly right. Now it's not—they're not the World Series. Like, oh, you know, slam dunk. They're going to definitely win it. But they clearly have done stuff that is going to make everybody think exactly what AJ just said. They do need pitching still, though. That. Marco Bueller's not going to start the year healthy. I and mean, right now it's Glasnow, Yamamoto, Miller, James Paxton, if he's healthy, and Sheehan or Stone until Bueller. But we'll see. Glasnow hasn't made it, but pitched more than 130 innings in his career, right? Yamamoto's new. Paxton pitch- definitely has an injury history, right? Bueller's been out for a long time. This isn't like a this isn't like a dream's dream of a rotation here to start the year for Dave Roberts and the in the Dodgers. The upside is a dream. The, the upside is if they can keep them all healthy and keep them out there, but you know, we're, we're you know we're only listing five, but Yamamoto's a guy that probably needs a six man rotation too. They got to find another guy. Who's the anchor? Who's the anchor of this staff? Like you, you paid a lot to Yamamoto. Who's the anchor? Are you looking at Miller? Like 
hey, you know, you have the least uh, – oh, wait, no, you were just up from the minor leagues. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. There's a lot of – there's some question marks in there. Even if they bring back Kershaw, he's not ready right away. I mean, there's a lot of question marks in there. Their bullpen's going to be good again. But yeah. their starters are going to be very, very questionable. And there's going to be a lot of pressure on this team. Pressure is a privilege, as you guys mm-hmm. know. And pressure – when you have pressure going into the year, that means you're supposed to be good. And you want that as a player. I always wanted – man, if I went into a year and in the, in the paper's like, man, this is the last place team. Like, this is going to be a shitty year. You went into the season, you're like, oh, man, we got a chance to win. You're like, all right, let's <laughs> go, boys. Right? I mean, man, it – it's just one of those things. Like I wanted, I wanted this as a player to be like everyone bring it. I mean, bring it on. Like we're supposed to be good. Let's go. Let's prove them right. And if it doesn't work out, it didn't work out. But it's much better to be in that situation than be on a team going to the year going. Man, if this team doesn't lose a hundred games, it'll be a miracle. Well, let, <laughs> let me ask you this, Todd Father. So let's say you're playing against the Dodgers this coming season. Like AJ mentioned, you're going to kind of play up and be like, "Let's go. We're going against the big boys right here because mm-hmm. you got to play up to this kind of competition." Do you think teams will literally play better against the Dodgers this coming season because they do have the number one target on their back? I would say more than any other team in baseball right now because of what they just did this offseason. Like, will they get every opponent's best better than they would in the past? Or is that not really a thing in baseball? No, I I think the expectations of whatever, say like the Pirates come in and they're playing the Dodgers. Now your expectations are a little higher. I mean, it's, I think they're going to get everybody's best, yeah. And they come in L.A., they're going to try and stomp on you just like L.A. is going to try and hold them off. So I do – I was one of those guys, you know, when you face a team, a winning team that's got a best – you know, I should say a better record than most. I wanted to show them, dog, hey, listen, we're here to play too. So I think they're going to get everybody's best. I think they're going to have to battle their tails off. I think they're going to be a really good team. I think they're going to win over 100 wins, and I think they're going to do just fine. But still, I think – Every team that comes to play them or wherever they go, it's going to be a packed house. It's going to be loud. It's going to be crazy, and it's going to be raucous. And I think that's only good for the sport too, as well, because you have more competition and guys like, oh no, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not taking a day off here. I want to show Yamamoto what I'm about. I want to show, you know, Glass. Now you came over to LA. Guess what? Doesn't matter where you go. I want to, I want to try and knock you out of the park. So, yeah, your energy levels, your expectations, and. Um, you know, getting the boys going is just a little bit higher than usual. I think I'll be interested in watching. Yes, the other teams are going to quote unquote try their best. Like, I don't, I don't necessarily buy that. Like, you're going to try your, you should be trying your best all 162 games, but that's a whole nother discussion. How is this team going to build themselves up to not be the first round exit again? Like Max Muncie talked about. Like, I think other guys have kind of, hinted at like maybe this is really good for the season and we can do this for the season how's this team going to as a lineup withstand that first round you know getting three wins before the other team gets three wins in a shortened series that's going to be to me that's going to be the interesting thing to watch throughout the season if they make any little tweaks that you can notice that will work in the postseason Pitching. They better find some pitching. They have pitching for the postseason if those guys are healthy. If they resign, Kurt. yeah. If they are, yeah. if. But I mean, I don't think they want Kershaw starting. A but I'm saying they, they thought they were in a good spot last year and it didn't work. Yeah. Right. They thought they were in a good spot. Twenty two didn't work out. But if the guys that with are their starting on that, rotation, you thought, yeah. but both, but but and their bullpen. So like in twenty two, right? I did the Dodgers Padres series, right? Mm-hmm. Their bullpen got blown out. In that series, that's why they lost. I remember I, I told the story. We went into the Dave Roberts' office before the game, and he's like, "Yeah, I want to stay away from this guy and this guy and this guy." And guess who the first guys in the game were for the Dodgers? Those guys, he said, because their starters couldn't get anywhere. But, but that's it, been the that's been the story of the Dodgers in the postseason. Their starters, they don't use their starters enough, not only in the regular season but definitely in the postseason. So they get in these long series and they lose because their bullpen gets tired and they can't make the moves that they can make in the regular season by bouncing guys up and down and making, you know, ILs and options and this and that. I mean, it's just a different animal. And if you're not built, you can build a team however you want to build it and have the best depth, which the Dodgers clearly do. But when you get into those five and seven game series and you don't get those off days and you don't get as many moves to be able to make, it catches up with you. And it's done this year after year after year with the Dodgers. See, I disagree. I think they just have to hit. They have to hit. I know in the long series, I agree, I agree with what you're saying. In the long series, they just, you know, it's like, oh, we're just going to go right to the bullpen. 
which some of their starters are kind of like bulk guys, five innings here, five innings there. So they're going to have the same type of issues. This team should just bang. And I don't know many teams that have come through the season just smashing and go to the playoffs and keep smashing. Like they have to have that, you know, the thing that comes to my mind is the Astros. Low strikeouts, high walks. And I think the Dodgers have that lineup, but they have to be able to do that once they get to once they get to the postseason. Or maybe it's an advantage to be a wild card team, and that's why the Phillies are just keeping their <laughs> well, team together. And they're like, you know uh, what? The yeah. Braves can keep winning their division. The Dodgers can keep winning their division. We're cool. Most teams lately that make it far are wild card teams. But here's here's the thing. Love it. How many teams can just smash their way through the playoffs? There hasn't been one. You got to have some pitching. You have to have starting. They pitching. do have pitching. You, okay, the team. I, I'll say this, and I will die on this sword. The team with the best starting pitching wins almost every time. But their talent in every series you want to find. But what what don't you like the the talent in the rotation? Okay, is there. Fine, you're just worried but, about the innings. But they but don't, they don't let them go deep enough at times. They don't let them go. Oh, Rich Hill the one year was throwing like a no hitter, and Dave Roberts like second time through, whatever. Nope, you're out, and then they they got smacked right because because then it caught up to them. They won a World Series based on that they, against they, true, but they the won race. a World Series in a shortened year, which is what you know. Listen, they still won it. Okay, don't don't get me wrong. Yeah, they still won it. But, but they didn't win it where their bullpen had been taxed for 162 games plus a long postseason. And all their guys had been taxed, right? It was 60 Correct. games, and then boom, we jumped into the bubble. They were piggybacking starters. Remember, Arias exactly. was big later in the game. Exactly. So that, to me, listen, they, they still won it. I'm, I'm not saying there should be an asterisk or any of that stuff. Nope. I'm saying they still won it. Yeah. It's just a different animal when you have to go 162 and then start this five, seven, seven game series. That's a lot of taxing on not only your starters that don't go deep, but then your bullpen. And like we talked about, Yamamoto might need a six-man rotation. They got to find another starter somewhere. I mean, they don't. The, the young I mean, they guys have some young guys, in. but are they going to yeah. count on all young guys? For the regular season, you can. That's the thing. The regular season okay, is very then different. Okay, let's say they get to the postseason. No. Well, no, they're not starting in the postseason. They're hoping – what is their starting rotation? Their dream starting rotation in the postseason right now, Kratz, is Yamamoto. Glass now. Glass now. Bueller. Bueller. That's it. That's really right. your one, what's, two, three, and then everything Bueller's, else is fun. They're going to bring them back on which one on short rest. So you want a fourth? Mm-hmm. Who do you want for the fourth out of that group? I love Miller. Miller. I love, I love Miller. Miller. Yeah, okay, Bobby my Miller. question. Yeah. Okay, Bueller's going to be on a pitch count, innings count this year. I mean, yeah, but starting yeah. him late helps because then, true. But still, it's going to be what a hundred innings. So you're going to just boom, 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 and hope you time it right for the postseason. Yes. Okay, yeah. Yamamoto. He's going to be on a innings count. Is yep. he? No. Yes. 100%. Glasnow has you never pitched more than 130 innings, I think we said. Yeah. All so, right, so here, I have a new idea. Time will tell. Todd, we start the season May 15th for the Dodgers. They can forfeit the first 45, and then they'll win the rest. No, I'm kidding. But <laughs> I get what they're saying. It's just, for me, I think certain teams are taking the quality over quantity approach. The Dodgers are like, we, we got this down. We know how to win the regular season. We need to win the postseason. And so we're going to get high upside arms. And even if half of them are hurt, if we have five – and three of them are good to go, we're going to be yeah. in better shape than we were this past season when it was a broken Kershaw and a bunch of young dudes who didn't know where they were. Mm -hmm. he, here's what AJ's saying in a nutshell. You need your starters to go longer. And without an anchor of that staff, you're never giving your bullpen that one out of every five, one out of every six days, essentially off and not getting burned out because it just adds up July, August. It's... It's part of the reason guys get traded and they go to a new team and all of a sudden they excel because with the other team, if they're worth being traded for, they're getting used every other day. Whether they're in the game or they're getting dry humped, they're getting used. So this team and every team needs to figure it out how they can't just say, okay, look at what the Cubs did. Oh, you know, let's go. Right to a lot, Alizale. Let's go right to you know the next guy. Let's go right to our three guys. Oh, next day, one one run game. Okay, next guy. All build up on top of the fact that your starters don't go long. That's why the Dodgers need somebody to step up and be their seven inning guy. Their Corbin Burns, their Garrett Cole, their you know Blake Snell. Not not anywhere yet. So it's 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 that it's that aspect that they need to be able to have success later on. 